Mar Martha Gill dropping in first here. That's right, from Bolton in the UK. Spends a lot of time on the Enduro World Series. But does well at Crankworks, wins dual slaloms. Yeah, and she's on that Marin downhill bike, actually. Uh, usually on that trail bike, but it'll be good for her to have the downhill bike. Because we got so much rain, you can see how rough the track is here. You kind of need yeah. that. Some big wet patches still in the woods there, Elliot. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely an advantage of going later. I mean, if you were to view the track, I don't know, two days ago, it almost looks unrideable. Yeah. And it's dried out so, so much. Yeah, absolutely stunning there in the rainforest, though. Another line there on the inside as well. Martha taking the way around second overall in the Crankworks. Silver medal for in the Crankworks. Queen of Crankworks last year. Yeah, and really this track, Rad is talking about how physical it is. You're, you're working for speed here, so you're moving the bike around physically, putting it where you want to, using kind of pumping to generate speed, trying to double up little yeah. braking bumps and stuff like that. Six low. Six last year in Cairns downhill. Great result for her there, trying to stay high on that camber. She's... And there she is, taking that high line there, kind of dropping down. It's easy to easy to get a little bit off. There we're seeing that big rut there. You can take that inside. Sometimes it does. The interesting thing about this track really is that it's soft, but then hard packed at the same time. So the riders are going to want to use a lot of these ruts to keep their tires where you would want to. You're not going to want to run spikes or anything like that here because you have those ruts and it's so such a hard packed base. You see her on this sector three right there. You see on the um, right side of that first section and you have the, the jumps. Definitely opportunity to make some time down now. We saw Bruni with a big pull in the middle of there through a triple. Gill timing things up nicely. I mean, you can see the, yeah. the skill that she has, you know, kind of doing that triple manual there on the downhill bike. So loves the loves the tweaks on that dirt jump bike as well. Outside line there. There's a couple of lines on the inside as well. Oh, and it gets it's, caught out. Big hole in there. Man, it's so, it's gotten so deep everywhere. Yeah. Trying to ride up maybe on the side of the track where it's less chewed up, harder packed. But it's looking good for Martha Gill. 22 seconds up then. But the last bit on split on track. Here she comes down across the line. Another big finish line jump there if you want it. Goes fastest with a three at 42. 25 seconds ahead of Hastings. Voicey Hicks in there at the moment. But we've got a new leader with Martha Gill. And that's how physical this one is. Seven riders to go. Here you see that steep section right here, taking that outside line. We might see a couple of riders taking the middle or middle to outside. You're really trying to carry as much speed as you can out into the open. See, so it gives her that outside, gives her a pretty straight exit, which is nice. There's a lot of roots that are super slippery right where her wheels are about to go, and you have to turn on them. It's pretty terrifying, actually. Yeah, they are. Look at them. Horrible. If you can't get caught out by them, I remember seeing some big crashes there last year in practice. Definitely. We'll see that triple manual coming up here. This is where Martha kind of excels on all these pumping sections right here. Does a double, manual, manual, boom. Nice. And that speed you're going to carry all the way down. Not much pedaling really between there and the bottom now. No. A few different lines here, Elliot. Yeah, and this is that deep section. I mean, this is all brakes, right? It's crazy yeah, to think that downhill bikes can kind of plow up these Erode. massive ruts. So seven riders left at the top. Just joined us. It's Crankworks Rotorua celebrating its 10th birthday. Kate Hastings there in second, and Cassie Voicey in third on the hot seat. We saw a lot of her last year at Crankworks Cans. Did great in the pump track there. Even on that step up, after the rhythm, I was like, 
<laughs> recovering, <laughs> saying how hard it is. Kalahari Muirhead then from Queenstown, just 20 years old then. One, another one of these young women from New Zealand we're going to see so much of this afternoon. Yeah, definitely. I mean, from Queenstown, rides a lot with Jenna Hastings. Um, you know, got first in the in the Wanaka dual slam that Crankworx Summer Series. Yep. Took a sixth here in the downhill last year as well, just at 19 years old, remember. So, some massive talent on show here this afternoon. And I think it's great too that the New Zealand athletes, they travel a lot, right? They, they get their yeah. experience, they go overseas. We saw Kehlani doing that as well, going for the big jumps here. Whoa. I mean, it's so good. It's perfect over it. I mean, steezy, no stress, just, um, yeah, really, really skilled. Missed that last one out, so even more time could be made there. 2.1 back at the first split on the track, though. Definitely in touch, and maybe made that up then through that jump section. Yeah. See a dry line being dug out again already. A really, a lot of rain coming down a couple of days ago. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we saw Martha make a couple of mistakes in the section, so Kalani definitely has a chance to make up some time. Trying to stay out of that slop, eh, Elliot? On the bottom there, you can see it you hit that. It's going to slow you down. Most of the riders, I imagine, are going to try and stay higher on that camber. Yeah, I mean, if you want to risk it, you can stay super high. The, the trade-off, you know, you, because you haven't ridden the track for a little bit, you see Kehlani going low there, where Martha tried to stay high. If you can carry enough speed and go low into these ruts, it's, it's totally fine, as you see Kehlani doing. But sometimes the ruts get pushed out you know, yeah. they might get pushed out outside the tape and things like that. So it's definitely... Big holes uh, appear in them. Yeah, you have to kind of think on the fly. Adapt, yeah. Always great when you're in a race run. And a, a, a berm is now a hole where you expect to be able to do a turn. <laughs> great to see so many people here as well up in the uh, Kakariwa Riwa forest. Yeah, Kelani taking that middle line really oh, good yeah, through there. Like, down there. Definitely some really nice exit speed. You can see she makes that step down a little bit easier than Martha did in this rhythm section and your arms and legs are just smoked right here everything telling you to sit down manages to find a few more pedal strokes into this step up cleanly over there gonna lose some serious time if you tag anything like that yeah. three back at the last split on track now though so won't be uh, touching that time of Martha Gill I doubt there was a mistake there from Gill though previously yes it's, it's definitely hard at the end of the track to keep up that intensity. Yeah. It's a long track, isn't it? It is. It's a long, hard track. There's not many places where you can relax. That 342 that a Martha Gill should be okay. It's going to be close. She goes second. Just 0.15 back then. Kalani Muirhead, great run. It's the UK leading at the moment with Martha Gill. Yeah, like you said, she just minimized those mistakes at the end of the race kind of shows what it does yeah, it really shows what it does to be able to carry that speed so here's that jump section you can see her pumping into it actually kind of pushing down over it more than enough speed for her to do that yeah. Great run from Kalani. Stylish over there. Made it look dead easy. Should he hold out the track? He can practice on it, though. And I think sometimes there's a mistake. People make the mistake of thinking that the smooth line is always the fastest line. It's... It's really not. I mean, Ed Masters always talks about it. Just main line with confidence can kind of do a lot for you. Yeah, that's right. Messing about. Yeah, yeah, fight. right. Snip here and there. Totally. Sometimes just simplify it and go as fast as you can down the easy yeah, right. track you can make it. I know. For sure. I mean, that takes that takes an awful lot of self-confidence yeah. to do something like that. Bella Burchill then from Rotorua, just 16 years old. One of the women that we saw doing those big jumps yeah. this year. Well, actually, I know she did one of them last year in front of my ex-teammate, Darren Henderson. He was forced, he said. His hand was forced to uh, do it on his e-bike with uh, not, not the best consequences. Oh, my. Yeah. Man, and, and it's actually amazing to see 
how all around the skilled she is. I mean, she was in, in Whistler in the under 17. She won dual slalom, she won pump track, she won downhill, and she won air DH. So she completely swept that whole Crankworks World Tour stop. Incredible, yeah, look at Amazing. that. First one. Loving these jobs. Goes deep over there. there. Go. She yeah. The pedals in. Let's see what she does. And going for this big one, 60 feet. Whoa, clean as well. Awesome. Look at that. And she'll carry so much more speed now into the forest. Yeah, you can see, like section. you said, yeah, that, that making those that little double right after. So six back at the first split. What's doing that gap? Done to her time. We'll find out split number two. Looking good through here though, Bella Birchill. Yeah, definitely. Fifth at the national championships a few weeks ago in the under in the junior women. Yeah. Gonna try and stay off the brakes down here, right up on the side of the track. Stays even there, so lost a little bit of time in that in that top, but stays even, so definitely definitely faster. It's these little bit more technical sections. Easy to get offline and lose a lot of time there. There's some of those deep ruts. Yeah, I think that's a, actually really important to highlight that if you get offline and you dab the brakes like we, we saw Bella do yeah. just there, you can't really make up the time. You can't pedal. You can't really pump. You kind of just have to wait uh, for gravity to get you back up to speed. Looking like she's off the brakes down here. Then Bella Birchill. Steep section still to come. This, such a steep exit from this forest. Flying down there. Wow. Yeah, Harry really speed good. out. Bella's Six. definitely got one of those styles that can, I would really say it can take a lot of speed. She's really in control. You know, it's really about her kind of just adding speed. Yeah. Um, as she gets better and better and getting more experience. So, I mean, <laughs> being that young, being able to do jumps that big, it's, uh, yeah, she's going to have a great career. Impressive, it certainly is. That's right. Looking really composed down here as well. Won't find six seconds, though, on Martha Gill, that's for sure. But gonna go in a third place comfortably enough with this run. Last couple of turns. Big holes in there as well. Goes over that big finish line jump as well, then. Bella Birchill goes third. Just 4.6 off in the end. Made up a little bit of time there. Of the fastest splits last sectors we've seen at the end. Breathless. That's exactly how it was. Yeah. We're seeing her. One of the things I noticed about Bella, she's got this really incredible balance. This track is a is such a balanced track. Because there's all these ruts, you have to deliberately put your bike, use your hips, kind of let the let the bike, you know, have your body, the, the center of your body on the on the sides of the bike. And Bella does a really, really good job of that. You can see her. Like, go wrong down there with those compressions. For sure. Yeah, so much kind of, kind of like body English. Still pretty wet there as well. It is. And that's, you really have to be deliberate about where you're putting the weight. People ask, like, how do you avoid slipping on routes like that? The top riders and, you know, all of these women are, are putting pressure where there's no routes. Okay, Sasha Ernest then from Auckland, just 17 years old, this woman. Only four riders to go after her. Then what can she do here this afternoon? Silver. At the uh, national championships a few weeks ago in the junior category, won the dual slalom here last year. Yeah, I mean, Sasha is one of those riders. She's on this Trek Factory racing team, which is one of the you know the premier teams in the Great world. To see her get picked up, right? They've sure. seen the talent. Yeah, definitely. I mean, she got she was second at Mount Saint Anne, first year junior, so the last World Cup of the year, getting on the podium there. You can see, I mean, you watch, you look at her Instagram and she is one of the, like, the way that she jumps. I mean, you saw it on, on those first couple of jumps, letting the bike kind of pop up, you know, putting it exactly where she wants. She's got this really, really amazing jumping style. 
Half a second off at split one. Did go around that jump, though. But remember, we're comparing a time to Martha Gill, who went around that jump as well. So it'll be interesting to see where she is at the next split. If she can carry good speed down through here, good pace here. She could threaten that type of her leader at the moment. Yeah, definitely. But out there. Yeah. It Looks like back in, I think, now. Still struggling, maybe. Took a while to get her foot back in. Yeah, and she's um, she's definitely looking good on this section. We would think that she would be one of the best riders down here in this technical bit. Also fit, you know, yeah. training for that World Cup season. It's really long, you know, European tracks that we have. You can see the balance that she has through here. Not getting, you know, not panicking when the bike goes out, but just letting it go and waiting for it to catch. On the inside rut there, sat down pedaling there, it's physical. Fourth overall in the Junior World Cup last year. And, you know, it's mad, mad to see the progression, you know, particularly in the women's category, in the younger women's oh, man. coming through. It's unbelievable, it's, it's right? Crazy, We're right? definitely looking. At, you know, these women are going to be winning World Cup elite races in the not too distant future, fast down through there. I like that she was a little bit further inside. She actually straightened out that bit a little bit more than we've seen some of the other riders. 1.2 back at the last split, though. Still doable, Elliot, but it'll Definitely. take something special now on this fast part of track down to the line. But well, we know that Martha made a mistake in that last right-hand turn, and, and we know her last sector is definitely beatable. Let's see how she does here. She, she needs to get this section clean. Takes this middle line yeah. in the rut. Rode it nice and tidy. Yeah, definitely putting good time. Looking smooth and fast through those turns. Yeah, it's going to be a close one for sure. 3.42.3 then. The leader at the moment, Martha Gill. What can Sasha Ernest do? Comes down to the line. Goes fastest. 1.2 into the green there. The 3.41.04. Now the time to beat. Sasha Ernest takes the lead in Rotorua on the RockShox Tanifar downhill. Oh, she'll be happy with that. Turning yeah. it around in that last sector. Definitely. I mean, and it always, it always feels good to get on a new team, put down a run. You know, it's the first really big race of the season. It's so tiring. <laughs> Saying just out, that was so tiring. This is that last section, so. Watch the way that she exits this section, setting up much further right than we've seen a lot of the other women doing. Using that body, taking up all of these compressions. So she's way further right. And what that does is allows her to straighten out that whole section. And this was a section that she kind of won the race in, right? We saw that mistake by Martha Gill. Easy through there, gets that left-hander good, and then yeah. is able to carry the speed to the finish. Sends that big finish line jump with ease. That's cool. I love seeing, you know, junior woman on the Trek Factory racing team. Yeah, it's brilliant. Like it's, so, it's so cool to see that jersey, that name. That's right. And so much talent from down here in New Zealand. Shania Rawson, 25 years old. Rotorua, local woman, will know this forest well. And a third place here at this race last year, so. Yeah, I mean, like you said, she is a local here. She does a, does a lot of coaching, trains on the BMX track a lot. You definitely see her the rest of Crankworks and the speed and style. Looking good so far. Carries yeah. a ton of speed down yeah, there. Yeah, really aggressive. Yeah. Pumping the ground there, working hard. Any of the... Yeah, that sounds you hear is just her seat buzzing. Yeah. Ups to take that outside, doesn't do those jumps, but 1.5 yeah. up on that first split. So, can she keep maintaining this? Going around those jumps though, how much time will that cost her? But one and a half seconds up, it's a fair margin. Pedaling through there as well, plenty of energy. Can she keep this intensity all the way down? Woo! Balance nicely through the rut. Yeah, and it definitely, <clears throat> Janaya is one of the kind of smaller riders out here, allows her to kind of stay deeper in the bike, which also means that she has to commit to a lot of these lines, you know, diving into the ruts and things like that. Oh, and she's extended then. Look at that, 2.1 into the green now. Whoa. 
Yeah, she's... Yeah, some good top in made there if you're prepared to really let it roll. For sure. I mean, she's technically so good. I mean, that right there is definitely getting this high line as well, staying out of that mud. But you have to carry enough speed down that steep bit to even have the speed to get up high on that next section. So Shania showing us how to ride this forest. Yeah, she definitely is. Looking like she's going to beat that time of Sasha Ernest. Still a little way to go, though. Heads now into this last real steep section. Comes in there with pace yeah. right around the outside as well. So fast. Wow, that was quick into there. Surely she's going to extend, I would say, looking at that. And she does nearly six seconds up now. So this is a massive run from Shania Rawson. Uh, put real pressure on the three women left at the top with this one. That's got to feel good to put down a just a good, solid run. Hometown. Hear people shouting your name all the way down the all the way down the run. Yeah, look at that flying over the top. Of so good. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, surely going to go fastest by some margin there. That 341 is going to come tumbling down by Sasha Ernest. She's about to get beat, I think. Just running the holy line through there, the main line through those last couple of turns. Goes around that finish line jump though. That's going to cost her a second. But goes fastest, still six seconds into the green. 3.34 the time to beat. Shania Rawson now leading in Rotorua. Yeah, what an incredible bottom section. Nice. Wow. That was a sick run. And here is really what you know set her up for that last half of the run, taking some lines that we hadn't seen before using that experience. And notice that she's really good with the brakes, breaking, breaking early everywhere. One of the things you have to think about when it gets wet and soft like this is not so much, I mean, obviously you're using the brakes to stop, but you have to be strategic about it. And so when you see Shania break, she's not breaking over roots. She'll let off the brakes where she needs the bike to work. She needs the suspension to work. It's going to put everyone, including last year's winner, the woman who's going to be starting next, Jess Blue, under some real pressure. So got nicely over that second big double there as well. Yeah, yeah, we kind of, we've seen almost like a, a bits and pieces of a, of this incredible run. We saw some some of the women doing that big jump, but one thing to note is that the top time in qualifying by Ellie was a a 346, so yeah. we're already 12 seconds ahead of that. That's right, of course, perhaps drying out. So, from Queenstown, just 21 years old, riding for Cube now, Jess blew it then. Just secured her fourth national downhill title elite in a row. Last year's winner here. And great to see it, you know, Jess again free from injury, all that success come in with injuries over the last few years that have definitely slowed her down a bit. Yeah, definitely. Oh, you see some of that cloud coming, cover coming over. Up by 2.5 at split one then, so showing us her class here. These jumps, are, we know that Jess will be doing these big jumps. Oh. Saw her at Red Bull Hardline in Wales She's last year. She's speed there, she went so deep through there. Easy over it. Yeah. Picking up, pumping everywhere. Surely extended as well, I would say. Nice and clean through those ruts. Classic Kiwi with no gloves. <laughs> of course. Absolutely. Yeah, it's good Trucking to see her on this here. on this cube team. It's definitely a you know an interesting one when you switch teams. You don't really know where you are. Been on that GT team for a while. 4.8 now, so pulling another 2.3 in that second sector. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. Good to see a new team, new motivation perhaps, Elliot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's always good to switch things up, you know. Catches the brakes there a little bit. You saw her kind of hop out there, get a little bit slowed down in that rut, but pedals through there, which is good. Get her back up to speed. Oh. Comes into that rut late. Amazing what we've seen. Just do it, Red Bull Hardline, the Welsh version of the last couple of years. Actually, a broken ankle there last year in practice. Didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. But it's definitely looking, definitely looking like she would uh, 
do a complete run of the course there. Quick into this last sector yeah, then. I mean, Whistling down here between the stumps. You watch, Jess, and she's just got this incredibly high average speed everywhere. It's not just one section. It's kind of everything that she's doing. But losing a little bit of time there, but I think that she'll um, have a little bit of a cushion to play with. You definitely saw Shania have an amazing bottom section. Taking that outside line here. Yeah. Need the brakes. Still All looking these. good, but the momentum actually with Shania Rawson on this bottom section, so blew it. Less time to play with perhaps than she thinks. Oh, but fast around those last couple of turns, she'll send this big finish line jump. Blew it. Comes across the line, goes fastest. New leader, 4.8 into the green then. Jess blew it, nearly five seconds up on Shania Rawson. That's a huge run. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, And one of the reasons it is so hard is because the, the ground is kind of like sucking you down, right? It's like being in a being in sand yeah. almost. So you're trying to pump stuff like that. This is those jumps. And look how much pace she's got here, how deep she goes on this second one, squashes it as well. Yeah. It's definitely one of the, uh, you know, Jess is one of the best jumpers that we have on the downhill circuit. Yeah, she is. She's amazing. And it's going to be great to see this year what she can do injury free. Yeah, injury free. Phenomenal rider. Look at the pace of her into this last steep section. There is no room for error down here. You could see her using kind of her hips to put the back end of the bike where she wants to. Bang. Hopping up on the side. So that was like a deliberate thing being able to catch a little bit of a downside there. Oh. Yeah. It shows like the, just the, how precise all of these riders are picking every single foot of this track is, is planned out before they get there. Hopping, double. Yeah, look at that. that. That's amazing, that's so cool. Yeah, amazing then. Just blew it, what a run. Making sense of it all the way down. Taking the lead by nearly five seconds. And Jess blew it. Make it her second run here. In two years. Let's find out how it went. She's down there with Tracy. Jess, that was an amazing top session. Can you tell me what was going through your head in those slippery woods? Uh, honestly, just wanted to get to the bottom. Yeah, I haven't been feeling the greatest coming into this race, so I was more just keen to do a bit more time on the bike and have some fun. I mean, it still looks slippery out there, but you made it look too easy. You said you weren't feeling well. What's going on? Uh, long story, but <laughs> yeah, it's definitely still slippery out there. It's uh, on and off between dry and slippery, so. Not many girls hit the big jumps and you made them look easy. Can you tell us what you were thinking as you hit the Kenyon? Uh, actually, the last one I did, I kind of cased it and bounced a little, so I knew that run I had to just pedal and pull a bit harder, so. Yeah, it's a bit of a, you think about it, but that stuff's okay for me. Well, you did amazing and you're in the hot seat, so good luck for the rest of the afternoon. Thanks, Tracy. Okay, well, can she take the win here? Or will it be the last woman at the top? I uh, believe that Reese Van Leuven won't be starting, leaving just the 16-year-old now, Ellie Hulsk-Bosch. This is going to be uh, some match-up, some showdown. Yeah, I mean, it's so cool to have the Crankworx World Tour stop in Rotorua, seen some of those shots again over the years remembering Kelly McGarry and yeah. all the amazing things that he's done over don't the years that he did. Late yeah, great. don't forget the festival just getting going here this week. 
Kicking off all next week, dual slalom, speed and style, pub track, and of course, the big one, the Maxis Slope style, in memory of McCann. <laughs> That's last year, Jenna Hastings. Hastings. From last year. Getting over it, it looks almost easier this year, another year to settle down, perhaps running a bit faster now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when you're in your race run, you always hit things a little bit faster. See all these wall are just nailing it. Nick Hanna. This was Laura Spurgier styling yeah, out over yeah. And then Tohoto. Sam Blinkensop. I Rudy. Loic, of course, all business. Just like low, low <laughs> and fast, wasn't he, eh? So we're just coming around now. One rider left at the top. And one of the things that Jess said too is um is that when she doesn't feel good she's just trying to get down and um i think a lot of the younger riders would say you know i'm not feeling good but i see it's a, it's a race so i have to try my hardest so she knows you know what i gotta ease into it it's a long season that stuff will come good yeah that's on. right she knows not to rush it so 11 seconds separating the top three shanara rawson second at the moment sasha ernest 3.41 from her. The Antipodeans all over it. I know. It's all about the Commonwealth, Elliot. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, here we go. And there's your leader, Jess Blewett then. Will it be? Back-to-back -back wins for her here. I love listening to riders talk about this minuscule ru runs and lines. Makes all the difference, right? The number one qualifier then. On a track, just 16 years old, this woman. Ellie Holzbosch. An incredible qualifying run from her, taking down Jess Blewett amongst others. Yeah, I mean, this union team was just on fire here. Ellie oh! qualifying first, almost tripling out of the woods. First time we've seen that. Blackie Stevens McNabb qualifying second. New New She's bike up by this four and year. a half seconds and split one. That's insane. Ellie is just. I I told you in the pre-show that Ellie is just on fire. Look how much power she has yeah. on the pedal. Deciding to go around those jumps, but pedaling all the way around those jumps. Everywhere. Can she keep this up, this intensity, all the way at the bottom. Just 16 years old. It's amazing to see her. We're seeing, you know. The future, yeah, absolutely. This, here, this, this, is this crazy. new wave of New Zealand women that are coming through, already going to be making their presence felt yeah, right on the edge there as well. Look how aggressive she is, Ellie. Yeah, just so much body English. Yeah, letting the bike slide. Loses a bit, but still, nearly four seconds into the green. Then, yeah, just the big transition to go from that really fast section to the technical bit. You have to get back on the brakes. Go through there, pedaling everywhere, a little bit wild. Oh, back end getting switches. She that's can't make, you know, Jess was super smooth. Yeah, and that's gonna cost her actually. That yeah. section is a little bit of an uphill right after that. That's so. right, it's pretty flat for a mistake like that. Hard to get the momentum again. Won the last round of the NZ Nationals in the junior category, but it was a time was good enough actually to see her take the overall. That's yeah. how fast she is. Really nice there, avoiding all of the holes, hopping over stuff. Different oh, line look. we've seen. I'm going to look at this next split with great interest because there was a mistake in there. And we know that Blue, it was so, so quick down here then. But she's green again, nearly four and a half, 4.9 now. Massive advantage, nearly we're, five seconds up earlier. We're seeing her take lines that nobody else has, avoiding a lot of the holes, you know, going low in berms, kind of weaving around. And that's going to allow her to take, keep it going. it's going to keep the uh, bumps from robbing her speed. And look well, at that, look at that entry speed. Pace it, she came in there as well, perfect. Wow. Look at the speed of her through there. Right on the edge of the track here. Again, avoiding the holes. Yeah, where it's all soft and beaten up. Oh! Inside. Big slide into the last two, couple of turns. Didn't look like it, cost her too much momentum. Goes for this big finish line jump. Here she comes across the line. How 
Chris Bosch takes the win by nearly six seconds then. With Rock Shocks, Tanafar down, he'll go to this young woman. Incredible run. The fastest qualifier, fastest final. That's the name we're going to see a lot more of. Congratulations, Ellie. Amazing. That is an amazing run. She should definitely be proud of that. I mean, yeah. making this track her own, taking lines that nobody else was, recovering from the stakes, kind of riding beyond her years in terms of experience. Yeah, that was just brilliant. Like all that pressure on her shoulders as right. well at the top. Right, I don't know yeah. what's going on with like the junior category nowadays. How do you qualify first against, you know, a, a Jess Blewett and just rise to the occasion? And the fitness, I mean, she was, we know how physical this track is. And for her to be pet, putting down that, those sort of watts on, on that stuff, pumping where she needs to be, you can see her there, using every single bump to generate speed. Able to recover after that mistake. Yeah, that's right. And this is what I was saying, hopping over that, going way left, yeah. right? So that's gonna allow her to carry the speed Going all the way right, all the way left. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, those are those kind of things. You know, it, what that means is that she's not sitting on the side of the track and practice and watching people like Jess Blue and saying, where is Jess going? And I'll just do that. She's doing her own thing. Yeah. She knows what it takes to, you know, go fast on a track like this. A style of a down through here. Jumps way right. There's a little rut right behind this pad. Yeah. Catches that. Amazing. So uh, good. It's nice. so good. I'm no. just like watching this yeah. in awe. Yeah, Ellie is going to have a great season. Well, let's hear from her now. She's with Tracy. Eliana, oh my goodness. You're 16 years old and you just took out the elite women's podium. You won, obviously. <laughs> How are you feeling? Um, so happy because it was it was so much fun. Um, this week's been pretty hectic, just like tree hugging a lot, <laughs> loving the loose loam. But today, Rotorua put it on as always. Um, yeah, just so stoked, so happy, so good. I mean, some of the lines that you took up there, none of the other girls took, and they were so fast. You missed loads of the holes. I mean, what was going on? Um, followed Tyler Wake down the track, <laughs> stole his lines, um, and then also my coach Lewis Hamilton just worked on like the most direct lines and yeah, put it on, I guess. <laughs> so a little bit of New Zealand insights there. How does it feel to knock Jess? She won last year and now you're the winner, you're the new crown champion. How does that feel? Um, honestly, I don't really know. <laughs> I kind of just rode my bike and yeah, I guess that's pretty sick. Well, it was very impressive and congratulations for taking the win today. Thank you so much. Congratulations indeed, then a smashing. Incredible time there, 324.1, taking the win from Jess Blewett, Man. Zealand national champion, by nearly six seconds. I mean, Eliana, you've got to be proud of that. That's yeah. unbelievable. Congratulations. I mean, yeah, she mentioned Lewis Hamilton. He's a yeah. Rotorua local. And, and Tyler Waite, actually, that she, <laughs> crazy that she's just following one of the best elites. But a lot <laughs> of the New Zealand elite men are saying that he's one of the best kind of New Zealand hopes in that junior class. He's racing an elite here today, but um, yeah. yeah, he's definitely going to be one to watch. A lot of talent on offer then. Well, it was an amazing run by Ellie Howells Bosch and a brilliant women's race. Join us in the mid show in a few moments. We'll see you there. Look at the time from Stevie Smith. He takes his first ever World Cup win. The making of a legend. Stevie Smith, a.k.a. The Chainsaw. He was a bit unpredictable, he was creative, he was wild. He did have a great life, full of giggles and laughs and adrenaline. The untold story of a true champion. Long live Chainsaw. Now available on Red Bull TV. Really awesomely fun.
Riding a bike down the tightest streets and steepest staircases? Sounds like a plan. The ultimate urban downhill race series goes global this year. Three continents, but only one direction. Look at that. Downwards. Red Bull Cerro Bajo Series 2024. March 23rd, live on Red Bull TV. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Crankworks opening world tour stop of the year, Rotorua, excuse me, in New Zealand. And we've just done an incredible Rock Shocks Tani Far downhill with the win going to Ellie Holzbosch, this 16 year old girl, woman, excuse me, that has beaten Jess Blewett, yeah. you know, the four time national champion, the reigning national champion. I know Jess said she wasn't feeling that well coming in, but. Impressive, Elliot, to see that. We, I mean, we talked about her in the pre-show. This woman, it, it has something special. There's, there's kind of a few times when you watch downhill racers doing something different, and we, we've seen that over the years. You know, it reminds me of like a, that run reminds me of like a, a Sam Hill, right? Like doing things that nobody does, going to their personality, pushing the, the pace further than we kind of normally see and yeah. riding aggressive, right? Yeah doing stuff, right, she said, made mistakes, hugging, hugging trees, doing whatever, but then to come out, put it together, make a couple of mistakes, recover, and win the race. Okay, well, let's go over to Tracy over in Rotorua. We've got Christian Hauser as well, under 19, sneaking into this top 20 for the final. Oh, am I good? Jess, second place, pipped by Eliana. How does that make you feel? Honestly, I'm just stoked for her. I knew she could do it. So, uh, yeah, I'm just really happy to see her beat me. So, yeah. I mean, second place is bittersweet, but you're stoked for her. How was your run in general? And do you think you could have made up time places? I think I could have, but uh, honestly, I had nothing in the tank this week. So I'm just happy to make a run and it's good to see Ali in front of me. So, yeah, it's good to have some up and comers chasing you. I mean, they look up to you. And how do you feel about having them kind of idolize you and now beat you in a race? <laughs> I mean, it's never easy when they beat you, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's good to have. There's a lot more girls now, especially when I started racing. There was maybe a couple of us. So now it's like growing. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, thanks so much and still great job on second place today. Thanks, Trace. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, to hear Jess saying there's younger women already coming through, she's only 21. Yeah, right, yeah, these young guns. <laughs> I mean, what, what is going on? It is just mad. And, of course, yeah. with that run, Ellie has put herself really in the driving seat for this year's Queen of, Queen of Crankworks competition. These are the women that have won it previously. Jill Kittner absolutely dominating before Vea Burbeek. And, of course, Caroline Buchanan the last couple of years. Yeah, three winners in seven years. So Caroline's going to be going to tie up, going to try to tie up uh, Jill. But uh, I, mean th I think those three names are to win a, a Queen of Crankworks title, you do have to be one of the best, if not the best bike rider in the world. That's right. Exactly that. There's no getting away from yeah. that. No, it's a big title. And that's it. It's going to be good to see how that unfolds. OK, well, the men are coming up now. And let's have a look at the start list. Then this is going to be seeing Ryan Guycrest, Gilcrest, excuse me, kicking things off. George Brannigan, a man who's been on many a World Cup podium. Lucas Cruz going just before him from Canada. Yeah, I mean, we have Elliot Jameson, who we know races those Enduro World Cups. Charlie, Chaz, we saw him on the uh, course preview with Brooke and, and a Dan Brooker, who is kind of burst onto the scene for me at least in uh, Crankwork, I mean, sorry, um, Red Bull Hardline. Well, that's right, didn't go his way. We'll talk about that in a bit, but we know what a talent he is, Brooke McDonald. Lucky Stevens McNabb, and then the number one qualifier, Bernard Kerr. And you know, Ken, the men are going to be going for this King of Crankworks as well. Let's have a look at how it works, Elliot, because yep. as we said, all these different events, dual slalom, pump track, speed and style, 
all carry points towards the overall title. Yeah, so we're, what we're seeing right here is Tohoto's kind of breakdown in points. We know him to be a downhill specialist. He burst onto the scene here in Rotorua years, almost a decade ago. Um, had that mistake in the first round here in downhill, but you know, pump track, dual slalom, those were his bread and butter, but you Pump have track. to be. He is the king, he is isn't he? The king. Yeah. I mean, it's just incredible. And and I think that that's why he does so well here, because he's so good at pumping and working the bike. Yeah. Cheer boy. <laughs> Let's have a look at him in action. And here is Tohuto, the king of, the reigning king of crankworks. In action earlier today. Woo! Going for it out of the gate. Oh. I wouldn't want to be going to those trees that quick. I know, yeah. This is his, I think, qualifying round. You can see it's a lot more wet than it was earlier. Yeah, the track's definitely sped up. We saw that with that qualifying time coming right down in the women's, didn't yeah. we? You know, the winning race run. It's definitely running quicker and quicker now. It's got to be. Totally. I mean, you could just see how smooth Tohoro is over oh. the jumps. You don't even hear the bike land, you know? Local man from here in Rotorua. His dad, one of the drivers of the shuttles, actually, in the forest. Yeah, he knows this place oh. like the back of his hand. Doesn't he? Yeah. Loves it. Quick down there as well, look. That's, when you get, this is one of those tracks where you, when you get it right, it feels so good. It feels, you know, you, there's a couple of extra gears that you can take on a track like this if you can carry that kind of higher average speed. Because there is, when you make a mistake, there's not much you can do to no. make it back up. No, that's right, it's difficult. Yeah, just doesn't have the gradient for it. So. Yeah, and that's that section that we saw Ellie take that, that high line in, Tohoto taking high, and then yeah. this really kind of uh, deep rut, and you just have to go for it. Absolutely. And of course, last year, it was no other than the five-time world champion, Louis Bruni, who graced us with his presence and laid down a score to when Bruni, Bruni don't mess about when he puts no. it on, does he? Huh? Well, he, I think there's a lot of these kind of World Cup podium, World Cup riders who go to Crankworks and they don't put it all out there, but Loic uses this race every year almost to put down a World Cup winning style run. He doesn't hold back, he doesn't leave anything out there. And so for him to do that again, I mean, he's the most winning male rider here of all time. Yeah, that's right, he's something special. Okay, well, he's unfortunately not in action, but plenty of men are, and they're coming up right now after this break. Stay with us then, the Rock Sharks, Tanafar, Downhill, Men Elite, right after this break. We'll see you there. Pump up your tires for the bike content on Red Bull TV. And check out the best live events, feature films, and shows. Download the Red Bull TV app for free and sign in to watch all of our content offline. Download the app now. Hello everyone, if you just joined us, welcome to Rotorua in New Zealand. Oh, like it's that. men elite downhill time on the Rock Shocks Tanafar downhill in the Whakariwariwa forest. Some beautiful views there over Rotorua. Incredible part of the world. I'm Rob Warner alongside Elliot Jacks. We just had a great women's race, Elliot. A lot to look forward to in this men's race. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this uh, this is a it's a great track to kind of test the riders. It's a, it's a technical track. Yeah. Seeing the current leader right here, Richie Rude, racing a lot more downhill this year. See him on this new Yeti downhill bike teammate here in that gap one of the more technical sections on the track we see take yeah, the right line there it's gonna, gonna tee him up in the middle Richie one of those riders that is one of the strongest riders that we see mm. muscles bulging out of the seats <laughs> Tohoto in second, Jackson Fru in third there. So Two. good run by Richie Rude, no doubt about that. 2.53 the time to beat at the moment. 
And we have these. Brian Gilchrist, we saw him. He was such a spoiler last year in in all of the dual slalom and pump track races. Here he is. It, it's going to have to last. So, Ryan Gilchrist, 21 years old. Choosing to race, choosing to ride on that um, trail bike. Not much of a downhill rider, enduro rider, really good on the pump track, BMX stuff. Oh, yeah, look at that, on the little four. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> he's not Launches scared, is he, out. this man? Interesting that, isn't it? Yeah, and he's one of the more fit riders. I mean, scrubbing off of there. Whoa. And this is the section that this trail bike is going to make him, is going to be a huge advantage for. Look at the speed of him on that bike. It's incredible, teammates. With Mick Hanna, of course. One of the best, I mean, I talked about the pump track stuff, but just one of the best technically at, at gaining speed on any sort of rollers. You'll see him finding the transitions on the track to gain that speed. Less than half a second off at split number one. Won the dual slalom in Cairns last year, actually. So, yeah, no, I mean, we saw that. You plenty know, of feathers in his cap. Against uh, Mick Hanna. Yeah. It was a big deal, hometown, right? Some of these steeper parts, you'd think. The shorter travel bike. Really nice line. A little line. bit difficult, but it doesn't seem to be slowing him down at no. all, does it? I mean, you have to take some of these wider lines here. I mean, he's doing such a good job. The trail bike is a little bit of a disadvantage when the track gets this rough because yeah. you can't go <laughs> main line with confidence because the, the track is so rough. Surely this bit's got to be slower on a trail bike. You need every inch of your travel, every centimeter down yeah. there. He's quick, though. He's quick. Oh! You definitely see some of the downhill bikes be able to just jump to flat off. Well, of there. that's how quick he is, keeping I, Richie Rude honest all the way down this track. Just point six back then of that last I flip. I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to make this up. This no. is where the trail bike is gonna really. It'll be whistle an around these berm turns down definitely. here. If he can handle the bumps, but it's not too bad. Yeah, he's gotta he's gotta hit this right, really good, and then the left. Can't believe how fast he's going. Pedaling everywhere. Still pumping down the bottom, the intensity then. Still absolutely there. Nice Ryan Gilcrest. Manuel's oh, through that turn. Just a finish line jump to go. 2.53, it's gone by. He goes second, 1.6 into the red. Gilcrest with a 2.55.4. Yeah, just great run. Great run. I mean, he was pushing so hard. He, he had to push really hard in that last section. It was just that last left hand berm. Kind of got stood up a little bit and had to tab just a tiny bit of break into the finish. <laughs> Not bad. Hey, Joe. <laughs> Good job, big dog. Hey, hey. Oh, shit. Oh, you were hooking. That is such an impressive job. He pulls that off on <laughs> So good. Here's that. Oh, oh just so smooth. Styling. You want to land right at the top. You don't want to hear anything when you land. Look at that. It's beautiful it's, riding through there. It looked incredible. Really, really nice. Huh? And here's that section we were talking about. You see Ryan, again, deliberately catching as many transitions as he can on a trail bike. The more you bottom out, you're going to get slowed down, but doing an amazing job. Well, from Pemberton, 18 years old. Plenty of incredible riding around where Tegan Cruz lives. What can he do here? Downhill bike. New team for him this year on that NS bikes. Oh. Hinder team. Carrying good pace through there. Nicely down over that big triple out. Takes everything to get that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's his first time here. Was loving the mud. Super style through here as well. <laughs> Styling it out. That's one of the sections, I feel like that's like a mental section, right? If you get that section good, it's a mental break. You can take a couple of rests. Let's see where he's at at the split. Point two back, nearly. So still very much into touch, excuse me, with Richie Rude from the USA leading at the moment. Yeah. Another young man. Making his mark at Crankworks, following in the footsteps of Finn Isles, who actually lives in Pemberton as well now. Yeah, definitely. Another rider taking that kind of outside. That's actually one of the more important sections on the entire track. 
because you need you need to not focus too much on the steep section because all it's about is that left hand turn into that flat bit. Oh, whistling around that right, using every bit of the track there. He's got the party box out. The music's playing as he whistles. Yeah. Down through the... these trees now onto this last big section. 1.2 into the red. Able to triple that. First rider we've seen do that. That downhill bike just pulling up. A little bit behind Ryan after that fast section. You saw Ryan so smooth through all of that technical bit. Able to carry a ton of speed. Really good run for Tegan, though. Good run. Some good power there as well as he sprints down. Now, last couple of turns for him on the inside of that one. If there's any way around the inside of that next one. Down to the line he comes then, and he goes. In a sixth place in the end, 3.7 off. Got some spots down the bottom. Yeah, I mean, that last section is so physical. Huh? Thanks. Yeah. How was it? All good. Big gap out. Yeah, it's even looked great. I mean, like we talked about, this is the first race of the season. I love that he actually you could see him shift up in the air off of that step down, grab a couple of gears to get ready for those bigger jumps. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's smooth like, they are over these big totally. jumps, huh? But yeah, it's, I mean, it's the first race of the season, so different riders will have different goals, obviously. But Tegan will have said, okay, I have a good off season. I'm on a new team. I want to come here. I want to put down a good result. He's definitely in the mix, right? Tohoto there. Again, a new team. He's on that intense team this year. Switched Raining over. King of Crankworks. Raining King of Crankworks. Looking good. Hometown boy. Yeah, another Canadian then. Elliot Jamieson. One of the best names that we have here, actually. And a former bronze medalist, actually, at the uh, Junior World Championships back in 2018. So, a man who can, that's for sure. Yeah, and like I said, he's typically an Enduro World Cup rider. He did a couple of top 20s last year on that new seven mesh common saw team with ALN and Wittenho. Pumping hard through there. Now he's going to come into the steep section again. Just 0.6 nearly off then. On that first split, committed into that right-hander. A few pedal strokes on the way out as well. And that was one of those, you know, that line that he did trying to jump into there probably would have been viable earlier in the week. Oh. But everyone would have been doing that. And as soon as you land, everyone's on the brake. So that hole has gotten so big. He's fast out that <laughs> he's long going straight. Wild yeah, he up. is absolutely holding <laughs> down there. I'll be interested to see the next split now. That was really good through there. I mentioned that. I was committed. Yeah, being able to take that left super fast, going in the ruts. And this is, again. this is one of those kind of enduro style tracks, super yep. technical, having to carry your speed, really punishing the mistakes. Narrow. Yep. Excuse going me. Going through there, I mean. Oh, quick down there as well, charging in into this last section. Next split, what's he done? He looked like he missed everything on that long off camber. 1.7 though, in vain for him. Yeah, and I'm, I'm liking that kind of outside on, on that steep section. I think over the years, that middle has gotten really steep. I'm interested to see what some of the top riders do through there. Richie Rude then with that 2.53. Elliot Jameson not going to touch that. Heading high. It's the first time we've seen that. Yeah. Shakes off a lot of distance, but that rut down low is so good. Well, yeah, and it takes, as we said, doesn't it? It can take so much messing about. Right. Sat up. Is it worth it? Right. Probably not if you're the only person doing it. We'll see how that in line unfolds this afternoon. Sixth place for Elliot Jamieson then. Solid run. Great run.
from Elliot Jameson. Was a great run, yeah. Yeah, this is that section I think we kind of have to keep an eye on. This middle line that Elliot took. Oh, it's so Look at the committed now, right? in his eyes and fa Look at his face. <laughs> Look at that off the brakes. <laughs> yeah, the eyes were on stalks through yeah. there. I can't blame him. My stumps don't look very inviting. Well, if you've just joined us, it's the opening round of the Crankworks World, World Tour. Rotorua celebrating its 10th anniversary, and it's the RockShox Tanafar down as we go to the top. For Hayden Steed from Newport, 26 years old, this man. Getting some good encouragement out of the, st out of the start. As he heads into this flatter, I would say, top section, but flatter, but insanely fast. Oh, big compressions, big risks. Ton of, it's really technical up there. 1.5 at the back, first split back then. Yeah, and I mean, Hayden last year at the end of the year had a Big injury, broke his L5, and I mean, ended up coming back, trained all off season, and was fifth at New Zealand National Champs. So, Incredible. yeah, it's really cool to see him come back and hard to come back from a big injury, just mentally, physically, it takes yep. a lot of work. Passing through those ruts there as well. Yeah. Richie Rude looking on at the bottom. It's been a good run for him. Yeah. Still uh, over 10 riders at the top, though. Oh, into the mud there, into the soft stuff. Yeah, and I mean, it's almost hard to know as a rider. I mean, that section is so... That left is, you could make a... Well, you yeah, could make, sure. a lot of <laughs> you could make a lot of time. About a second, but... That is kind everyone's of... Everyone's getting stood up, everyone's stalling there. It's indicative of what's hard about this track because you have... To it, that section, you want to, like I said, carry a ton of speed down that steep bit. But the reason that rut is so deep is because everyone's breaking in. Yeah. So what you actually want to do is come down that steep bit a little bit slower, let off the brakes early, and carry speed through that rut. Oh. I'm loving that outside. Yeah, it's wild, though, to watch. It's wild. 3.9. Back! Sends the triple! <clears throat> Kept the front wheel high there. I don't blame him. Yeah, so, Steed losing run. some time. Not many mistakes. I mean, it's no. one of those tracks where the mistakes are almost a little bit imperceptible. It's yep. All about your pace on that high line as well. So favouring yeah. that. It's up there pretty good. You could you heard him really have to break to get up there. So even though you are saving a lot of time, that is the trade-off. Or saving a lot of distance, I should say. Yeah. He goes across the line then in the tenth place for Hayden Steed. Mike's coming down pretty clean now, looking almost perfect, really, to yeah. me, conditions. Track's only going to dry out. For sure. Last rider's down. Bernard Kerr, it's got to favour them. I mean, at this level, at this stage of the day now, not yeah. much difference between it now. But, but it's, still one of, it's one of those ones, actually, though. Look at that. That's, I know. And then you're just, like, yeah. bombing. Crap. <laughs> Look how close his hand is on the left and then on the right. So you can see, look at his back tire lock up. It's the pace that yeah. riders carry everywhere on these now, you know? Lucas yep. Cruz then. Another Canadian from Pemberton. 22 years old, this man. See if he can um, the meet his brother. Sorted out up there. The terrible floods they look like they had in Pemberton this winter. Yeah. Fourth in the Worcester downhill. Then a couple of years ago. Whoa. On that Norco team with Greg Menard. And only half a second off at the top. It'd be interesting, I think, for any rider now on that team to see perhaps the development right. that Greg 
well, not just the development, the knowledge the that knowledge, he'll bring to a bike setup. The professionalism. I yeah. Mean, you, you the tenacity. Really, uh, yes. To it, get it exactly he expects, as he wants it. Exactly. I mean, he, he, he expects it, right? He expects yeah. professionalism. He expects the best. He yeah. expects, you know, his entire oh! team. Whoa, whoa. Close. Big moment there. Nearly out the front door. So Cruz cracking on down here. Lucas has one of those styles where you're like, he's a, he's like, he's loose. Well, yeah, he's, he's loose. He's, he lets his body like a bit. Loose, right? <laughs> oh, gets the pedals out of there as well. Turfing he's, it up, still like, pedaling. He's that so big. Sorry, that was, so that might be the most important turn on the track. I agree. I, I totally agree. I love I love watching him ride. He's a, he's a totally different style rider. Good pace down there. Yeah, he's riding well. Different line again. There's so many different lines. Oh. There. How quick do you want to go down there through those trees? Let's see if those mistakes. 4.6. Yeah. I think there was definitely some big mistake we saw there. And that you know that that left is so crucial because. It's it's on a flat section where riders are pedaling anyway. You've got to yeah. nail that. Yeah, and I mean, it feels it's hard as a rider to go through different rhythms um, where you come from a super fast section. It's uh, over the jumps, and then you have to really be precise, and then you have to open it back up again. So mentally, you kind of have to separate this track into almost four different tracks because it's so different. Yeah. And here he comes into the finish line. Through there, then. So. The Canadian crosses the line, Lucas Cruz, and he goes in a 14th place. Right ahead of Mick Hanna. We've got Baxter Maywald in 12th. Yeah. Lewis Hamilton, who he's, he heard Ellie talk about and making it into that top 20. Here's that mistake we saw. Look how deep that turn is. So what happened? I mean, just was a little bit far right. Front end slid into that rut, wasn't expecting it. I could watch this shot all day long. I know, I know. I mean, I almost feel like we haven't seen two people do the same line there. But... There's so many options, yeah. yeah. It's a little bit high in, low out. It's just a little bit wild with all the tree roots, you know, <laughs> big holes. <laughs> Well, keep an eye on this man then. George Brannigan, from Queenstown on the South Island, 31 years old now. And really showing us exactly what he's capable of with a brilliant third place at Red Bull Hardline Tasmania a few weeks ago. When Brannigan is on this form, I mean, oh, look at the man, pace of him down great. there. Look at this. And he's up by 1.5 then. So it's massive for George Brannigan. That's some top section. That is some top section. Injuries have really plagued oh, him over the years. It's so good. George has one of the best styles. I mean, George, when George is on, yeah. when George has the confidence, like like he said, after that third place in Hardline Tasmania, he's a dangerous rider. He's a threat to be reckoned with. That's right. Absolutely. Two World Cup podiums in his career. Look how fast yeah, and smooth was awesome. he was down there. Saw him get composed, saw that big hole, got composed right before it, took it up, and then made his turn afterward. Oh. <laughs> it's so yep. fast. 1.5 <laughs> up there as well. Staying it's even. You see Richie giving him a smile and a nod. I think he knows what's coming. If Oh, George. Oh, look at that. So we talk about not getting hooked up. No stalling. That is what that's supposed to look like. Where most people were stalling, he was already peddling. Yeah, there. That was yeah. incredible. So Brannigan then, looking like he's about to lift the bar here. The kids are enjoying it. Brannigan's enjoying it as well. So deliberate on the bike. You can see him just waiting, being patient. This is what a patient run looks like. Oh, I'd hate to see what a fast Way one looks outside. like. Oh my God! Look at Brannigan down there. Absolutely lit up, carrying uh, so much speed. 1.6 up triple. now. 1.6 up at the last split on track then, so he's almost definitely going to go fastest now, bar any mistakes down here. Richie Roode's been in that hot seat all afternoon long, but it looks like it's going to change. 
Right round the outside then. Little way to go yet. Didn't take the high line there. Okay, a ton of speed through there. Couple more turns to navigate. 253 then by Richie Rude. George looks super strong. I mean, he's he's definitely been training. You can see the fitness coming into play. Here he comes in. He's gonna go. Oh no! Way no lost time on the ball. Point seven wow. back. I am surprised. I'm surprised, Richie Rude. You have got to pin it in yeah. that last sector. Yeah. Then you cannot let that up. That looked like a dead cert to go yeah. past it. Yeah, for it sure. Did. 1.5 up, 1.6 up at the last split. I mean, and then he lost, you know, yeah, points plus seven. He lost 2.3. Rich is just an animal. Yeah, he is. I mean, 2.3 in the last yeah. sector he's lost. Yeah, Brown and that's and, unbelievable. And, and Richie went early in the day as well, right? I yeah. mean, it's getting drier and drier. Yeah, man, that's incredible. That is incredible. Oh, well. I think that surprised George. Yeah! But wasn't he just brilliant? Great to see him back to his best. As I said, some injuries. A big crash in Wales at Red Bull Hardline there with a collarbone a couple of years ago. Look at that. Straight line. Main line. Ollie Clark, 17 years old then. From Kakura. Let's see what this young man can do here this afternoon. On that. New Zealand National Championships in the under 17 and the series overall last year. Riding that elite, so he'll be in, in juniors this year. Pressing on down here as well. Quick through there. Point two, three. Sections like that, Elliot, in the dark there. They're the sections that are probably just might be drying a little bit more now. Yeah. Maybe a line coming through for totally. him. Oh, man. <laughs> the dial of him. Might have overdone it on that one. Yeah. Sometimes when you, when you do touch the brakes in the air, you can give it a little bit of a half a crank to get that wheel back going before you land so you don't brake, so the wheel's not stopped when you do land. Details. <laughs> oh. Bit of a hole in that last right on the way out of there, but good speed through there then for Ollie Clark. Definitely carrying the pace and definitely in touch at split number one. Split two will be interesting yeah. now. Oh, 1.7 back, loses one and a half in there. I'm still in shock <laughs> about, about Brannigan's that. last sector, really. Yeah, I mean... Oh, and he was... Brannigan, no one's done that turn as quick as that. No. Yeah, and I mean, we were talking about the fitness. I think that's kind of what we're seeing at that last section. That's where it really plays the part, because you come out of the woods, that last really fast section that we've been highlighting is what your, sec what your speed is over the triple, and then as soon as you make that left, you have to just work work really really hard there's that middle line oh, 3.7 back now oh. oh man you don't want to be coming up short on that no. triple that looked like a big whack it's a hard one because if you double that that last that last roller jumps you to flat but if when you have to pull that hard, you know, if you don't make it all the way over, then it, it's definitely going to rob your speed. Oh, that does look good from the outside to the high line, actually. Yeah, I don't know. He I disagrees. I can tell. <laughs> got a tone in his voice. Is it all? We'll see. I totally could be wrong. I totally could be wrong. I don't know. But you're right. You, I think the setup maybe pays, is where you pay the price for it. Well, I think you would say the that high line, if you were to really go for it, really like carry a ton of speed, we're seeing the brake, people hit the brakes, lock up that back wheel before you go up there. So if you want to take the risk and not, not brake so much to get up there, then that's kind of what's going to make that line faster, I would think. Brian Gilcrest, third place, George in second. Richie Rude. Here's Richie's run. Still. I, I got to see this bottom. Let's see. <laughs> or you can see it's a little bit earlier in the day, like we said. Yeah. That's right. Laying down the horsepower right out of the gate. EWS champion, this man. Downhill before that. Junior world champion on yeah, the downhill bike. Right. Junior world champion. Cool. Head in to the enduro with massive success. Yeah, definitely. You know, he can ride the downhill bike. Really, really good. Just loves it. Oh, that soil.
<laughs> okay, well, let's hear from him now. He's the throws. Richie, you had a bit of a rough day yesterday. Take us through your leading run today. Yeah, the past couple of days it's been pretty wet and I think I actually really enjoyed it when it was almost raining. And then, um, yeah, yesterday's seating around was tricky. It was really greasy, a little greasy. But, um, yeah, today was good. Put down a full clean run on, which was, which was great. And, yeah, I guess it was pretty quick. And, uh, yeah, now I'm just a little nervous. It's going to drive it and the time's running faster. But, uh, yeah, it's holding up. Well, great job and good luck for the rest of the afternoon. Yeah, thank you. OK, well, the new Shroud Maven's out. Let's have a look at it in with today's Brooke day and age, There's all kinds of breaks. Break dance. <laughs> Break in. <laughs> Breakable. Break room. Break through. And brick fast. But the only ones that matter here on the downhill course are these bad boys. You see the section here? It's a bit of a doozy. For breaking points, obviously you're coming into the section quite fast, so you'll be checking up just as you come into it. Probably in the middle and then a little bit out of the exit and then open up. I think it's super important for the bottom and the exit if you're going to jump the triple to have the right amount of speed up. And obviously in conditions like these you probably want to be checking up a lot more. Just trying to find that grip is going to be key. All that being said, I'm not going to break a whole lot because I'm the fucking bulldog. Let's talk about this nasty little number full of line choices. There's probably at least four different lines. One down the middle, one on the outside, one that looks like you can come over the stump and then through the middle, and then a full outside. The dirt, when it's soft and, uh, and fresh, you do potentially make li more line choices, but typically when you have like people riding it and riding the same line over and over again, it kind of just gets cut into to one line, which is kind of sometimes hard to get out of and it's just easier to um, sort of stay in that one line. For me, like my favorite like line option choice would probably be coming in wide and sort of pre-hopping off of this down into the back side of this, which, which kind of like cuts off you doing a turn. You kind of do your turn here and then you're straight down into the corner at the bottom. And there you have it, a few personal insights into braking and line choice here in Rotorua. Well, great, and we're going to see Brooke McDonald third from the end and drop in today. Here is that start list then, the 10 riders left now at the top of this mountain. Alex Storr, Charlie Mackey, watch out for Dan Booker. Had a big accident at Red Bull Hardline, but was flying Sam Blenkinsop, a legend from New Zealand, as is the man we just saw, Brooke McDonald. It's going to be interesting to see what Lucky Stevens McNabb can do for the final qualifier, the fastest qualifier. The man looking for his first win, actually, in 2024. That's it didn't right. go his way That's right. in Tasmania yeah. a couple of weeks ago. So, uh, Bernard Kerr, let's see. One Crankworks win to his name, actually, in his career from Innsbruck last year. His only right. Crankworks win, which is surprising in downhill. So... Let's see what he can deliver this afternoon. Fastest qualifier, he is going to want to convert that. And a beautiful day. Yeah, I talked to him after after Hardline, and he was he was saying one of the things that Bernard has, has been working on, got so much better, is just that intensity, making sure that it's not a safe run, that he puts everything yeah. into it. He said, you know, at Hardline, just was not quite the intensity that it needed. To, he knew it wasn't a winning run. So I think here he's going to have to redeem himself if he wants to. So from the UK, from Wales, Alex Storr then from Wrexham. On the forbidden bike as well. Yeah, it's just a, it's Spinning a, it up out of the gate. Good team this year. Got some great talent. Fast down there. Look at the pace of him. We're going to see Conor Fearon in action at Crankworks Australia. I know he's focused on that one. So... Point six up then at the first split for Alex Storr. Incredible. 
Okay. Where's he found that sort of time up there? Really, really nice. I mean, one of the riders that we typically see on the Enduro World Cup series, that Forbidden Crankwork Synthesis team, got that um, top 30 last year at the, at the World Cup. So trying his hand at the downhill bike. Oh, committed into there. It was still sliding when he was on the pedals on the way out. So still looking good. That's right. I mean, we know he'll be strong at the bottom. Yeah. He's going to need to be. He's going to get near anywhere. Oh. Near. Man, 1.6 into the red there, though. Now Elliot losing 2.2. Yeah, and that's really just on the fast section there. Oh, I guess oh, yeah, a little lost bit a bit wide, more time yeah. there. Yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely yeah. losing more and more time there now. Right, and that's what we were saying. You can't, if you, if you mess up, you can't really pedal yourself back up to speed. No. You saw the back tire just kind of spinning. If anyone can, this man can. He has <laughs> yeah, to stop true. pedaling. He has yeah, to stop turning true. those pedals, but you're right. No, it's crucial that you've got to get that right. And one of the things that riders will do when it gets really muddy is run a harder gear so you don't get that wheel spin. But yeah. Obviously, it's, it's harder to push the gear like that oh. as well. Super quick down through there. 1.6 and split two over three. Oh, my goodness me. That looked like it was uh, a yeah, sore neck tomorrow morning. <laughs> Losing more time now, Elliot, on this bottom section. And like Richie said, that top of the track is definitely going to dry out a lot more up there. You know, I mentioned it in the course preview that the right-hander, there's a lot of off-cambers. It's the steepest part of the track. Um, so definitely would expect the times to start to come down throughout the whole track, but definitely on some of the more technical sections. Managing almost to miss that hole between those two berms. Last jump then for Alex Dor. It started well. Crosses the line. Nearly six seconds back in the end. 13th place for him. For the Welshman. Yeah. Pretty good. I'll let you know when you clear. Yeah, and sometimes when you do have a couple of mistakes, it's just hard to get back into the rhythm. Yeah. See, Alex just like kind of just fighting it just a little bit through here. We saw George on a lot of these top sections just finding that rhythm. Here's that mistake that we saw. Like I said, that was just kind of a late breaking point. It caused him to run wide. You really want to carry speed down all these steep sections, but a lot of the time you just have to say, I'm going to give up a little bit of time, break early pick the most important sections on the track for that average speed. Whoa. Def Looks cool. <laughs> he was definitely turning on. Charlie Mackey now then. Jazz. years old, yeah. Nope. Chaz Mack. <laughs> An incredible course preview with Brooke McDonald. Oh my God. He Look had, at the speed he's he going in the heading into the trees. moments in practice. He's gonna be, we think this could be uh, pretty loose. Carrying good speed down through there, though. And he's up by nearly a second. So, Chaz Mack on the gas. On the gas. Only eight riders left to go here. Oh, so good. There's so much style. Going fast and just... Look like he's loving it. Yeah, nodding his head. I think maybe maybe his helmet came uh, came up on him. I his head on done it. Yeah, maybe over those jumps. Oh. He's got like a playful sort of style, yet he's doing warp speed 10. Yeah, you can, he's really tall and, he, and he's able to ride with his knees a lot further in than a lot of the riders. Lovely loose style. Yeah, definitely. It's nearly a second. Staying up. But still very much in touch then. 45 thousandths off only at split. Nice. Number two, there. and he carried good speed through there. Yeah, it's taking that middle line. I really like that if you can carry enough speed. Do that left-hand turn. Fighting it too hard on the way out. Good on the pedals again there then. Richie Rude, a smile creeping across his <laughs> He knows how good his bottom section I was. Know. That's for sure. Oh. Chaz is gonna let oh. it go through here. Oh, oh, I barely watch. <laughs> Terrified speeds down through there. Charlie Mackey then. Absolutely flying here, only 0.2 off on that last split. So very, very much in touch, but Definitely. we know Definitely. that Rude's last sector was insane. Yeah, Chaz really has to 
put the pedals down. You have to be super deliberate. No mistakes through this part. Can he go fastest? Can he go top three? What a run it's been then. Late break. This man, the intensity is still there, Elliot. Definitely a little bit late in that right-hand turn, but fast to these berms. He does look quick through him. The clock will tell us, though, if he has been, where's it going to be? For Chaz Mack, he goes fifth, 2.3 off, another rider. Losing time in that last sector. Two back, just point two seconds on the second back at split three. And in just that last bit, he's lost two point one seconds to Ricky. So great run from Chaz though. Yeah, wasn't it? And I'll tell you what, it was spectacular just to make it, you know what I mean? It was brilliant, <laughs> a brilliant watch. <laughs> On it the whole way. Yeah, I heard. Totally, yeah. Yeah. I mean that's good. Like look, watch this. This is just Go on, Chess. Go on. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, wasn't it? I think that, you know, Chaz spent a bunch of time a couple of years ago in um, in Japan, which is super cool. It's kind of similar to this. He's a Queenstown local, one of those dudes who, as you can see through his riding, just kind of like embodies that New Zealand spirit. Loose. Yeah, I love Loose. it. I love it. Yeah, you're right. Amazing to see just how much talent there is down in New Zealand. Not always easiest for them to get up and race all the World Cups. Yeah. Dan Booker then, new bike for him this year on the Santa Cruz. And a man, again, who had a big dark horse, actually. Everyone talking about how quick he was going at Red Bull Hardline in Tasmania. <coughs> Things didn't go well for him, actually, crashing in the very early stages of his race run and uh, having to sit it out. But well, we know how quick he can be from the EWS results he's had, and he's up by over a second then at split one. So this isn't good. And he should have to finish at the lower sections as well. Yeah, definitely. To make it stick if he's anywhere near. Actually went over on the side of that jump. First rider I've seen kind of take that low line off of that first one. Styling, Styling it up. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, Dan was one of the riders that a lot of the, the top dogs in Tasmania were yeah. impressed with. Originally discovered by Sam Hill. Well, that's right, because he went riding with him at the Medina Bike Park, right? Yeah. And basically, he was like, someone needs to sponsor this kid. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, how crazy is that to be an Australian and have... Oh, look! 0 0.68, 0 0.7 up now, then. Yeah. So this is good stuff from Dan Booker. Can he keep it going down towards the bottom? Oh, there's the line that, that we was saw. Quick. We saw that so much last yeah. year, cutting off both of those, but... You saw how he slid around. You have to be so confident to do that. And I love that line because you don't get in that deep, deep mud that we've that, seen so many mistakes in. I would have said that was quicker than anything we've seen. And saves Straight off time. Through the middle, incredible. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. What's the next split going to tell us? Smooth and fast in the then. Dan Booker whistling down through the trees. Oh, and he's lost time, sends that big triple though, and carrying good pace to clear it like that. He's not scared of the air miles. <laughs> That's for sure, but what can he do here now from here to the bottom? Yeah, he didn't get any cranks in after that roller section, so I know Richie was pedaling everywhere he could down through here. He lost over a quarter of a second, or two eight back at split. Number four on this track, number three on this track, so. Up against it now, Dan Booker. Another rider looking to carry great pace through there. Last jump for him then. He's not going to do it. He goes fourth, two seconds back. Well, the riders at the top, which include Brooke McDonald and Bernard Kerr, have definitely got yeah. their work cut out. This is a race run. So watch him actually right here. He'll go off the le the right side of the jump. You see him come off a lower part of the jump. Kind of see that riders finding those low bits. Styling out so sick. And I mean, he's in good company. Right behind, you know, a Ryan Gilchrist, right? Yeah. Ahead of our reigning king of crankworks, Sohoto Arike Pinay. Yeah. The local man. I heard him say this is the first time he jumped the triple. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He made sure of it. That's damn right he did. Yeah, he, he nailed it. And like Brooke said, you really have to let it hang out down that 
technical section to have the speed. What a big moment for this young man. 16 years old, Tyler White. In the juniors in Cairns last year. The downhill there. We'll see what he can do. A big moment then. Wow. Big opportunity. Oh. Wow. 2.6 up. Are you serious? That was so That's good. That's inside at the top. 2.6 up. That's that was madness. Sick. So actually, Tr Tracy, Hannah sent us a, yeah. a little bit of information and said that this guy is has been on everyone's lips throughout the entire week. <coughs> Teammates. Imagine, he's brand new, brand on the, new on this Yeti team. Richie Rude looking on at this young He's like, now nah, the Who smile's is this gone. He's up. like, I, don't, I would rather be everyone else. I need to be my teammate. <laughs> Tyler White flying through these trees here. So smooth. You can see this, like the kind of the average speed through all of this stuff. Over three seconds up. Surely now he can make this stick all the way at the bottom and take down Richie Rude. So smooth. Oh my goodness. Uh, a mistake there. One foot out. He gets back in quick. Uh, Bigger mistake. Surely that advantage must be gone now, Elliot. The momentum's there, but surely he's lost some spit some time. That's where you have to mentally recover more than anything. Oh, it looks like. Oh, quick into there as well, but yeah, let's see. 16 years old. Go, Definitely riding like he's got nothing to lose here, which he has in this afternoon down the inside. Oh my goodness, mate! That was insanely quick through there. Oh, and he's still up by 3.0. Oh! oh! Wow! Oh, he blew it. Oh. He's blown it up. What a shame! Oh, surely that was it! <laughs> Where is he gonna end up? Oh my goodness! New line through there! Yeah, that was looked... so nice! Well, whatever happens on the clock, he's left his mark yeah, here this afternoon. This is sure. unbelievable. Tracy's prediction right. What a talent this man is! Really, he's so smooth, so deliberate, hopping over everything that he needs to. Gutted, but that's racing. I really didn't expect that, did you? <laughs> no. What? No way. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, what? Barely. Oh, it's like, just a bit. He's like barely out of breath, it looks like. Wow. So here's wow. this, here's this um, mistake right here. So he just runs a little bit wide. Oh, it snowballs a bit. Yeah. But on the pedal. Quick as stuff. Uh, it was entertaining. Oh my so goodness. So he did take this middle line look and how I wonder, quick he went down. Look at the back get loose. Uh, you think though that that was what caused him to lose the time over that triple not get enough speed for it. I mean me, he looked like he had all the speed in him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? What a incredible Run. Well, let's hear from him. He's with Trace. Tyler, Tyler, that run was insane. What, if anything, was going through your head? Uh, just trying to hold on to the bottom and pulled that triple. We nearly carked it, but hold on to it. So, yeah, pretty happy with that. I mean, you must have been up quite a bit and you only just got second by the tightest tightest margin yeah if you had had a better run you could have got richie but unbelievable run are you stoked with that yeah i'm stoked with that <laughs> happy to hold on <laughs> good job tyler yeah absolutely made a name for himself this afternoon an unbelievable run incredible stuff as we go back to the top of sam blankensop then from christchurch here in new zealand as well one of the most stylish new team for him as well on that Ooh. zero bike quick oh, down that through outside. there. And what's the split gonna tell us? Running the wet scream in the front and the shorty in the back, so. Up by 0.7 then, nearly 0.8 of a second of split number one. Looks big over there, carrying good pace. I would expect oh. I would expect Sam to want to make up most of his time with that tire choice, running the you know the full wet in the yeah, front there. That's right. You can tell how Is much dried out too much for that now, Elliot. Do you think it's pretty soft and loamy though? Well, he's he's saying I'm going to give up a bunch of time in that 
that uh, middle section at the bottom, at this, is where you're going to want to see him push. Yeah. He needs to make up time in this section. And a great traction across there. Lost a bit of time there, though. Over a second in that second sector, then, for Blenke. A World Cup winner. Oh, tidy through there, though. Look at it. A little that. bit. I mean, he looks good, but there's just a little bit of pace missing, I yeah. feel like, everywhere. Yeah, could be. Gearbox bike. Bout drive on that bike as well. Incredibly silent. Yeah, and Sam is just one of those riders. Oh. It's so good, able to find these lines. Manhandles oh. it down. Oh, my goodness me. Manhandling it through the trees. Oh, and he's up. And he's up. No way. By nearly a second. Taking so much risk there. Wow. The time's all over the, the place this afternoon. I feel like you can make up time anywhere on this yeah. track. There's so many different sectors to this track. That's incredible then. So can Sam Blankensop keep it going down to the bottom now? And so this is where he's he's going to give up a little bit of time with those tires. But I mean, he's on a great run. Nearly a second it was. 0.7 of the last split. No one, though, who's been out getting near Richie Rude in this last sector. Here comes Sam Blankensop. What's it going to be? He goes fastest. 253.4. Nearly 0.4 of a second up. Sam Blankensop takes the lead in Rotorua. What was he doing down through that steep, that last steep that section? That was incredible. Oh, he gave you a little flash there, Rob. To <laughs> pull the shirt up. <laughs> Did some new lines I've never done before. There's a little engine in there, bro. Hitting <laughs> too hard at the bottom. Because I have to. Good shit, bro. New lines. Yeah, did your lines. New lines. Whether he meant to take them, I don't know. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. Yeah. Sam is one of those dudes. I mean, he is actually incredibly fit. You can see that little bit skinnier tire there on the wet screen. Shorty on the back, so a full wet in the front. Intermediate. Made it work, didn't it? Man. And this, look at this. This just says, work. okay, I'm just going to let off the brakes. Oh. oh no. <laughs> okay, five riders to go here then. At the Rockshox Town of Far Downhill. Christian Hauser then, the next to drop in. Actually, had a fifth in qualifying, riding as a junior, so impressive. Poor quick down through there. Carrying good speed around that right hander. Point two up then on the clock. And I mean, Sam had a good time. I mean, and this guy was just on fire last year. I mean, one of the best Italian riders we've seen. First at his first World Cup ever in the junior rank. Second in Andorra, European wow. champs. He's Italian national champ, like just, just every big talent. Yeah. Been a long time, really, since we've seen a top Italian down there as well. Yeah. Point two up at split one. Smashes that right hand of that full commitment into that one. Yeah, and, and in contrast to Sam, he rides really still in his upper body. On the union team as well. Whoa, quick down there. And green in sector two. So point two, three up now then. He's just, ah, mistake there though. That was not the best through there. Definitely got stood up and stalled a little in that right, in that left. That's right. We, we know that Sam definitely. Blenke opened it up right he here. He opened he? it up, right? Like as soon as he got to about right here. Yep. He was on fire. I mean, and, and that really carried his speed all the way to the finish. And those four riders at the top now after Christian Hauser are going to know that time as Hauser risks it oh, all really down nice. through there. Oh, can hardly watch that section. It's <laughs> insane. And now it goes red after that mistake in that left turn up there. Let's see what he can do. 27,000 then into the red. So still very, very much in touch. But it's Sam Blankensop leading that 253.4. On the inside line over the top of that ridge in there. The Yeti riders, Sam, only the rider able to keep up with the Yeti riders down through this bottom bit. Absolutely right, yep. Last turn then, here we go. So 
Just a few hundreds in there, that last split. What's Hauser done? Time goes by, he goes in a fifth, 1.9 back. A good run. That's good enough for fifth place for Christian Hauser. And so wild that the race is being almost won and lost in this last section. So watch actually yeah. what Christian does here. Right in the middle here, he'll jump to the side, kind of wall ride. Right off of that wall ride so that he doesn't have to go on those big holes. Puts him a little bit far right. He's going to take a ton of risk, then hop out into the rut on the outside. You better hope there's a rut on the outside. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully Look. nobody blew it out. <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness me. Okay. From Squamish, 21 years old. The winner of the downhill race in Whistler at the end of last year. Here it is. Incredible. Scene. This was see insane. It was to see him take that final there. Wasn't it unbelievable on the 1199 track, the Stevie Smith track from just down the road to take the win up in Worcester. You know, the, it was just amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, that was an incredible run. As is that man's run here today. Go on, Sam. Sam Blankensop leading. Only a handful of riders left at the top, but they're pretty quick. But going back to Jacob Jewett, Bernard Kerr, the fastest qualifier. And one day that last saw some talent and him signed him up. Do you reckon he's going to be regretting that now? That? Master and apprentice. <laughs> Bernard getting beaten by this man who looks yeah. like a carbon copy of him. <laughs> so the 21 year old then. Let's see what he can do here this afternoon. And it's a strong, aggressive start as he fires it in to the Fakariwa Riva Forest. Down there, off the brakes, down there. Good pace around there. And up by 2.2 .2 at split number one. Wow. Oh, pushing hard, a little slide in that turn there. Oh, so good so far. This is it's great run. You can see the kind of the aggression that he has. Like I said earlier in the show, there's a couple of different gears that you can find on this track if you're willing to carry the speed that's needed through these sections. Perhaps looking like he's quick, slower through there or steadier through there, but that might be the way to do it fast, Elliot. Not yeah, hit that I mean, second I... turn too hard on the way out, takes your momentum, tiptoe through there a little. And he's up by three and a half then nearly now. This is incredible from Jewett. You really have to sh like sh kind of shift out inside Whoa. to outside. He was good through there. I like I like shaving off a ton of distance through there. Won the last. Frank Works World Tour stop of 2023. Is he going to start this year then in the same fashion? This is looking good. Massive advantage, but Blanky was super quick through this part of the track. The last split's going to tell us more. He comes whistling into there. Oh, fast out through there, straight on the way out. Oh man, oh man, he's up by nearly five seconds now, Elliot. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Can anyone oh. answer this? Timing it up beautifully through the whoops. Oh, this is a great run. Coming in right where he left off, it seems yep. like, last year, the Cranks Works World Tour. What a run from Jacob Jewett then. The jewel in the crown of Crankworks then at the last round of this run today. It's been absolutely insane. What's the clock going to tell us then? Here comes Jewett down the line and he goes fastest by five and a half seconds. 247.9. Oh, is that today's win and run? That Elliot is going to take some stopping. That is incredible. The track looking like he might be getting quicker and quicker. But that, my goodness me. That was such a good run. I mean, just so much pace everywhere. Yeah. So much aggression everywhere. Wow. The winner on the 11.99 in Whistler has laid down a scorcher here at the opening. Stop of this year's Crankworx World Tour. Another name you're going to hear a lot more of. Three to go then here. Just three riders left. And Jacob's one of those, enough here. Man, Jacob's one of those riders that we've always known that he has the skill. But I think it's just 
having that confidence, having that good result last year kind of showed him showed himself, right? That he could yeah. compete with these guys. That he could not only compete, but, but beat these guys. Confidence is a massive thing. Spending some time with Bernard Kerr as well. As, as you said, you know, he's like... Bernard, he's busy, he's professional, he, but you know, he's he's one of the best in the world right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, he knows how to, he said learning how to set the bike up, working with this yeah, beautiful prototype sure. pivot bike that they're putting so much work into. They got it working. Yeah, and I mean, you can tell, I mean, Jacob's looking really, really strong. As is this man then, Brooke McDonald from Napier, 32 years old, new team for him this year on the Forbidden. It's been riding like a new lease of life in him this year. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Definitely. He's been riding this forest for his whole life. That's right. Fifth in Innsbruck last year. Got one here in 2019 on the Skyline track. It's one of his two. Frank works downhill wins and some problems then for McDonald. Dirt on his knee, seven seconds back. He's been down, Elliot, no doubt about it. Yeah. Definitely frustrating. Oh, what a shame for Brooke. Well, that's racing, he knows that. Yeah. Still trying to put in some sort of run here. Well, yeah, he knows the pace is there again. Yeah, for sure. I mean, in there as well. And on that, I was talking to him at, at, at Red Bull Hardline, and uh, he was saying that he just loves this bike. He told me the same, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it means, it means a lot. I mean, you see it right there, only half a, exactly, only half yeah. a second, and Jacob was making up time on everyone else. Yeah, so definitely on the pace then, Brooke McDonald. Yeah. Oh, different line there, if he meant that, I don't know, but. I mean. Gave him a good straight line out. He was on the pedals quick. Yeah, it looks dry up there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Crowd favorite. Oh, oh my goodness me. That's not somewhere you want anything to be uh, breaking loose there. No, I Big mean, dab on the outside, never good. Oh, McDonald looked like a different line there. Again up the inside, fast through there. Oh man, I'm glad when this is over. <laughs> it's too wild, that section. Well, he said it, he said it. The Bulldog. The Bulldog, yeah, he's back. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, and I think Brooke, he had that year last year where he was able to get a season, a full season under his belt after that massive injury we yeah. saw in Mount St. Anne. And I think this year for him, I would I would think it's a lot, a lot about getting the intensity back, getting yeah. the aggression back. So it's actually a win for him to be aggressive, make a couple of mistakes. That's all good. It's the first race of the season. Whoa. Amazing, yeah, the Brooke McDonald and a World Cup winner, a junior, downhill world champ. Today wasn't his day. It's not far home tonight anyway. <laughs> but disappointed with that. Two riders to go then. Just two riders. Will it be Jacob Dewitt that takes the win? Will it be Lucky Stevens McNabb? Just lose the front just a little bit right there. You can see how slippery the base of this track is. Or will it be the number one qualifier, Bernard Kerr? Oh, look at that line up the side I know, there, huh? I know, yeah. It definitely. Threading the needle. Pushes you. Oh. <laughs> that is big, that triple. Yeah. <laughs> the parking. <laughs> People parking at him. Oh, is that. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> I know, I wish, I wish I had something that, like, where people could bark at me. I know, that's cool, I'd like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, two riders to go. The Rock Shocks. Tanner Far Downhill at the opening. Stop of this year's Crankworks World Tour from Rotorua. Lucky Stevens McNabb from Rotorua here, then. Just 20 years old, another rider on the Union. And after that qualifier, we know he can push for the win. Yeah, I mean, this this guy is just incredibly skilled. Rode with him in Warzine last year. I look at the pace coming oh. down there. This first split going to be up by 1.48 then. 
Massive. Taking a breath right after he comes out of the trees. Oh, oh. back steps out. That's how hard he's pushing. That's got to have cost him that. Surely that advantage must be Elliot, that was mad. You don't often see that happen like wow. that. Wow, like you said, I mean, pushing everywhere. We always say that the top riders make up so much of their time on the easiest bits of the track. Yeah, yeah, perhaps drying out a little bit offline there as well again. Probably thrown him. It's looking good for Dewitt so far, remember? I mean, this is... Still Bernard Kerr at the top, but it's going to take something perfect. Yeah, I mean, it's to just rough. It. It's just rough oh, up there. Oh, my goodness me. He's up by 1.9, though, Elliot. Yeah, I, I think... What? I think that's how you have to ride that. I don't think you can ride that section smooth. Look at yeah, that. Exactly we saw that. that last year. Oh, he is back on track the now, Nico though. Malali line, being able to hop that. We haven't seen that at all this year. It's so much faster. Well, it... If with mistakes, he's still pulling time. I dread to think what the next split's going to tell us because that was some genius riding down through that section. He is pushing on hard here. Oh, oh. come on down through these trees safely. Last bit now then. For Being Lackey's. able to hold tight out. This is, this is great. About 3.1 for Lucky Stevens McNabb then. Oh, oh, jumps out! In. Oh, the only person we've seen hit that rhythm as well. So Double good. Into Doesn't that. even have to pedal. It's going to be hard for Bernard Kerr at the top now. Is this man about to go fastest then? It's not been a perfect run, but it's been extremely quick. Oh, no. Another mistake, wasn't it? How did he hold on to that? This is unbelievable. Oh, no. Hits his bar on the, on the pole. Pedaling everywhere. Lucky Stevens McNabb then. Giving it everything in his hometown race here in Rona Rua. Here he comes. Will it be fastest? Stevens McNabb goes fastest by 2.32. Unbelievable run. Oh man, I want a replay of that. That was insane. Let's go, Lucky. That was so good. He was. Man, it's good to see him mature wow. as a rider. I mean, he was so strong. You can tell how much he's been training in the off season. Super, super strong upper body. Makes a couple of mistakes. How on earth with those mistakes? I thought it was over, Elliot. I mean, to lose the yeah. pace he did when the back stepped out. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't the only mistake. Nearly went over the bars. I mean, it, it shows oh it shows God. how much pace he had, right? Yeah, I mean, we saw funny. it as soon as he came into the camera down that steep section. Whoa. Well, Bernard Kerr knows he's up against it now. The number one plate in the start hut. That key section that we've been talking about all day was, look at that. Oh, just on flat. That's insane. Huh? And, still, and still just no all problem. good. No. And he didn't lose perhaps that much pace because he still went. I mean, really he couldn't really break. <laughs> His back <end> was. <laughs> I can't believe that. I just can't believe it. And then nearly over the bars a bit further down with that big. Up there. Oh, oh unclips, clips back in. 40 miles an hour. <laughs> Wild. And so we've seen a lot of people take this inside line and they drift out, but Lockie's able to oh, hold it tight oh on the my. X. It doesn't even go out oh. there. There's that mistake right here. Oh, yeah, this was another one. <laughs> but look. <laughs> what did he hit? I hunted the front wheel into the bank, maybe. Uh, Overturned in. Go yeah. Oh, that oh, is an yeah. amazing run. Relax after that one, man. That was unreal. So, Bernard Kerr. Three times the winner of Red Bull Hardline. Fifth overall in the 2022 World Cup. Sixth overall last year. Three World Cup podiums. One of the big dogs of World Cup racing. He wants to win this. He won't be satisfied with anything else this afternoon, I get the feeling. And he can't oh! chill. He can't chill at all. He cannot. And he's back by 1-7. So that's massive. He's got it. I mean, we know that there were mistakes. That, it did look, we didn't see him there. It didn't look as tidy as normal through Bernard Frudo when we saw him come in the shot, but 1.7 back, that's huge, Elliot. Yeah, I mean, he can make it, he can definitely make it back up, but I'm wondering if he made a mistake up there or if he's just doesn't that pace? have the pace. We'll know right here. Yeah, I think it's going to be probably a oh, mistake though mistake. in Bernard. Yeah, he looks smooth through there. Different line, but I mean, he did drift way out wide. We haven't seen anyone take that. We're down there, no problems at all. Holds that high line, but losing 1.1 then through that key section. 2.9 then, a bit of the red now. He is losing pace all the way down. Another uh, yeah. small stutter there. Totally, I mean. It'd be hard I to pull that back. I think Lockie, his run, you know, like we talked about just that 
only rider that we've seen with that type of gear, especially that section right there. We saw not only did Bernard not do that line, it made a little bit of a mistake. Yeah, it's looking good for Lucky Stevens McNabb. Bernard, they're now into the lower sections of this drag. Had to grab a big handful of braking there, I think. So that's cost him a little bit more time, probably finds himself 6.6. Oh, 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 a big one for Kerr. Oh, he goes down hard. Oh, on that triple. Oh, Bernard. Oh. Cases it and look like the front of the bike just broke off. Wow. Not how we wanted this race to finish this afternoon. No. Yeah, definitely um, not the. Definitely not the run he was looking for. <laughs> Had a little bit of a mistake, like you said, grabbed just a little bit of break yeah. coming out of that. And that might have just not given him the pace for that triple that he was used to. Yeah, there well, he is. sat upright, thankfully, everyone. Maybe a shoulder. I mean, he's looks okay. Looking down at his hand. He has had some big crashes as well. Bernard Kerr, let's have a look. Comes up short. Oh, the oh, front end, let's go! Oh, man, on the prototype back. Worst case scenario, uh, that, Elliot, isn't it? Yeah, huh? that is There is not nothing ideal. as a rider that can prepare you. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, oh. not good, man. No one wants to see goodness. that. And thank goodness me that Bernard Kerr looks to be okay. Yeah, He's with the medical is, teams there. I mean, you, you that's something oh as a my. rider that you never expect. You don't have time to do anything. No, you, you don't like have time to do anything. Savage. savage. Oh my God. Well, we can now celebrate this man's win. No, Lucky Stevens McNabb has done it. Well deserved win. And he'd done it before that crash, to be fair. Yeah, well, well deserved win. An absolutely incredible win. The local boy winning hometown race. It's got to feel good. Oh, man, look at that. The youngsters are taking over, Elliot. <laughs> and there's not much anyone can do about it. You know, man, can I say that Joe Bowman, the owner of the union team, is like, the talent he's like billy bean like talent talent <laughs> scout like one two for the union trek team i mean Lockie has just come into his own 2.3 a big winning margin straight off of that uh national championship finish as well Well, it's a gold medal winning run and spectacular. And fast it was. Pedaling Ooh. hard out of the gate. No messing about. From start to finish. Yeah, wasn't it? That was a winning run. I loved how yeah, wild that and loose was that was. So man. Good. Just so much pace everywhere. I like it. Look. Oh. You, you just have to ride that section like that. There's no way to ride something like that smooth. Hopping out, like I said. Just Doubling in, eh? Perfect. Firm, right? Perfect. Look at that. Oh, I love it. It comes in so hot. Oh, he bumps the back. <laughs> and then he gets right back into it. I, mean, I thought he was probably oh, going out the front I, door. So, so did I. So did I, yeah. How on earth did he ride that oh, out? I love that. That is a, such a cool run. We that take our hats off to you. Let's hear from him now. He's with Trice. Lockie, that run was so insane. You had so many close calls. Can you take us through your run? Yeah, honestly, I, don't, I haven't done a run like that in a while. Like, I never had any close calls all week, really. Um, and, you know, I, I wanted to win, so I was going for it, making mistake after mistake. I got to the bottom, I was like, had too many. I'm pretty sure quite a lot of them were on the camera, but... Yeah, it was loose, but yeah, we got it done. In the end, it looked like looser was faster. Did you feel like you're on a winning run at the time, or you're just giving it your all and hoping for the best? Uh, I mean, I was feeling pretty good all week, and I knew I could win. Um, bits of the run felt like a winning run. I guess I never, I don't really know what a winning run feels like in the elite category. So, if that's one, I think it definitely have to be a lot cleaner as we go into the World Cup season. But um, I'm stoked.
Um, how proud are you to win in your home country, in your hometown? No, I love this place so much. This is my favourite place in the world. I'll never leave Rotorua. So to win in Rotorua is out the gate. Awesome. Well, congratulations on a big win today. Cheers. Yep. An absolutely massive win then for Lucky Stevens McNabb from Rotorua, riding for the union team. I am looking forward to the World Cup season yeah. this year. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's going to be good with the youngsters, eh? Yeah. Another generation seeming to come. Two and a half seconds nearly. Back to the Canadian, the man who won, actually, on the 1199 Crankworks uh, Whistler last year. Go there, of course, at the end of this year. Sam Blankensop, great to see him. Tyler yeah, Wade. Nice. Look at the time. I know, Elliot. I know. Huh? And it gets so, so tight as well. I mean, yeah. good grief. All right, well, stay with us there. Me and Elliot are going to have a look back at this amazing race in the post show. We'll see you there. The making of a legend, Stevie Smith, a.k.a. <laughs> the Chainsaw. He was a bit unpredictable, he was creative, he was wild. He did have a great life, full of giggles and laughs and adrenaline. The untold story of a true champion. Long live Chainsaw. Now available on Red Bull TV. Really awesomely fun. Riding a bike down the tightest streets and steepest staircases? Sounds like a plan. The ultimate urban downhill race series goes global this year. Three continents, but only one direction. Look at that. Downwards. Red Bull Cerro Bajo Series 2024. March 23rd, live on Red Bull TV. Welcome back to the opening round of the Crankworks World Tour from Rotorua, where we have just seen an unbelievable race. Congratulations to our winners today. But the men's race then was mind-blowing, Elliot. It had everything in it, well, right? I, you know what's funny is we saw two incredible runs from from Ellie and Lockie, right? Yeah. Like, both right. of them were on in a league of their own. I, I think that we saw things that nobody else had done. We saw an aggression. We saw that next gear that nobody else really reached. And yeah. I well, guess we, that's what it takes to win. I mean, let's talk a bit about um, Lackey's run because, yeah. uh, like, he was making that many mistakes. I thought it was over, but perhaps those mistakes were coming. And there was quite a few mistakes. I'd be, yeah. hey, who am I? Criticize <laughs> the winner, but you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah. But it was a bit messy, but that was probably because just the pace he was going at. Well, I think that in a in a wetter race, you you kind of don't want to see something thing perfect right like it, there's not really a way when the track is this in these conditions yeah. it's it's really slick like we were talking Changeable. about it changes all the time but i think one of the things that i saw we we highlighted it so much last year we saw that that section the kind of the key section that we were talking about all week Lockie went inside and actually hopped from that inside over there's a log right there if you yeah. don't make it it was Nico Malali who pioneered totally. it last year right yeah. it's a wild I wonder why we run. haven't seen it more well, but obviously because it's so difficult it's so difficult we we saw one person do it last year and we saw one person do it this year okay okay well I know that Tracy is ready now down there with second place let's go down to Tracy with Jacob Jewett Jacob, you're looking so strong on the bike. How was your run? Uh, run was pretty loose, but I'm pretty happy. It's still like pretty tough conditions out there. So um, yeah, stoked to make it down and put down a solid run. Yeah, I mean, you were five seconds up on the other boys and you looked super smooth. Did you feel like you were on a winning run? Um, I mean, it felt pretty fast, but with how loose it was, uh, you never know. So, um, no, I, ne I wasn't necessarily expecting it, but I was, yeah, stoked to see number one across the line. Yeah.
Yeah, well, second place is great after you win last year at the last Crankworks downhill. So, how are you feeling going to the rest of the season now? Yeah, obviously, like this is pretty, uh, pretty good result for me, fresh off the Canadian winter. So, definitely still a little bit behind in bike time. So, I'm stoked to be in the mix right off the bat, and uh, yeah, just keep building from here. Well, if you feel behind in bike time, it looks like you're pretty fast and ready to go. So, good luck for the rest of the season. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good luck indeed. I mean, you know, like it doesn't seem long ago that Finn Isles was coming up out of juniors from Squamish. Now we've That's got right. all these youngsters coming through. Yeah. The sport does look to me at a terrifying rate to be getting younger and younger. Like juniors now coming up and just destroying it. Jackson Goldstone perhaps opening yeah. the door there. Oh, I think, too, for me, the New Zealand as well. I think we've seen in the women's, we saw all of these incredible women today. We saw Laku, we saw Tyler Waite, like, yeah, Tyler White, let's have a look, because I know you've got something to show us, yeah. haven't you, on the Aki wall with a couple of mistakes he yeah, made, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to showing you guys this, because this was the section we were talking about all week long. Oh! And I'll kind of highlight a bit of, of what happened through there, because there was a couple of different lines, and I'll highlight actually two. Oh! <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I'll highlight what happened. Where Get me Lockie out of here. I can't handle yeah. any more of this so, stuff. So actually, what Lockie did... He came through here, right? You have that line, and then this was kind of the main line. You could come over here. And once you go, go down, what Lockie did, there's a, a, this log. I mean, you can't really tell too much what it is, but that is that kind of so much of the distance that you shave off there. And then this is where it really got interesting we saw a couple of people, I mean, we saw Brooke go there. Yeah. There's a big, big kind of rut through here. And right around here is where the end of the rut was. So what Tyler did is as soon as you go over that rut, front end wants to push. He tried to get clipped back in, couldn't quite get clipped back in. Yeah. And then you can see right here, he's clipping out as we, as we speak, miss hitting those ruts and stuff like that, those roots. Oh. And... It starts to go uphill, and so as soon as that happens, you're, cooked. I don't know, yeah, you're cooked. cooked. It's yeah. a bad place to lose time, isn't it? Another big mistake there. Nothing uh, in, the, in the league of Bernard Kerr's crash that we saw today. That was terrible. Yeah, that was, a, that was a terrible crash. Well, let's have a look as well, because that was just the opening race tonight. Of course, the king and queen of Crankworks competition is going to be going all next week through the Crankworks here and all season long through all the four stops. And in the women's, of course, after that win, then with 100 points towards that queen of crankworks, it's Ellie Halsbosch. But like we said, you know, she's going to have her work cut out, big dual slalom, pump track, spin style, I'm and now, of course, yeah. slope style. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm interested to see how much she focuses on these other events. I think as, a, as soon as you get that first result, it starts to enter your mind. Well, maybe I could be queen of crankworks, you know? I'm gonna start to take a pump track bike, a dual solemn bike, so we'll see what she does, and um, I'm really, really looking forward to her throughout the rest of the season. Certainly, absolutely. And let's have a look at these men's standards then in the king of crankworks. And Lucky Stevens McNabb doing himself no harm with that. Watch out for Sam Blake and Soppy. He has an eye usually on the King and on the King uh, title, doesn't he as well? But yep, yep, yeah. I mean, he's right in the mix. I mean, we know Jacob Jewett as well. He'll be there. Him and, and Bernard uh, will be at all the Crankworks hopefully. Yeah. And, yeah. and they uh, they're great. I mean, Jacob is one of the best slalom riders that yeah. we that we've seen. And like you said, Sam is a danger man. He's always he's always there in every single event. He is, and that's right. And it all and it all kicks off from Wednesday, but of course the culmination, the main event at any world, uh, any Crankworks World Tour is the slope style. And this one's even more special. We're the first time ever that six women are going to be on the start line. They've got their own competition there. The Maxis slope style in memory of Magaza. Don't want to miss that next week. But of course, before that, Elliot, Wednesday we start, I guess, with all the festivities yeah. of Crankworks. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait for it, man. I can't wait for it. We're opening up the season with a bang. <laughs> Woo, what a race that was. Holy Toledo. OK, oh, Elliot, man. thank you very much for your help this afternoon. Thanks very much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. What a way to get the Crankworks World Tour underway. Happy birthday, Rotorua. We'll see you next time.